Hello LEGO fans, welcome back to LEGO 48. Today I want to talk about ball pumps. I first discovered these over a year ago at my first show, and my first interactions with them were not good. For those of you who don't know what a ball pump is, the basic idea is a lifting mechanism that pushes balls up through a trap door or some other kind of one-way mechanism into a chimney that adds height. As balls are pushed through the trap, the column of balls inside the chimney gets higher and higher until finally, for every ball that's pushed through the trap at the bottom, a ball will exit out of the top of the chimney. The problem with this design is that, when you first start up a ball pump, no balls will exit until you fill the chimney. And after that, the chimney will always have that same number of balls in it, no matter what. At the end of the day, or at the end of the show when you are trying to empty the loop, most modules will empty themselves, but not ball pumps. Every single one of them needs to be emptied by hand. I've been told that this isn't that big of an issue. You simply flip the module over and empty it. That's all well and good when your module looks like this. But what about a module like this one? This module was featured at Brickworld Chicago in 2022. I love the artistry in this model, but the heart of it is just a ball pump dumping out to a lane splitter. The important point here is that there's no easy way to just flip this over to empty it. When we build GBC modules, there are many different attributes that can be applied to the design, such as size, speed, in-basket capacity, batch size, output height, reliability, maintainability, bidirectional, and so on. Two more that I'd like to add to the list are absorption and run till empty, or RTE. Absorption is the number of balls that are absorbed by the module when the loop is running at a nominal rate of 60 balls per minute. This can actually be determined by measuring how long it takes a ball to get from the inbox to the outfeed. For instance, in my vertical S-curve lifter, combined with the aqueduct outfeed, it takes a ball 17 seconds to get all the way through. At one ball per second, that means that this module is absorbing 17 balls. Why do we care about this? Because, when you have 150 modules at a big show, if you add up the absorption of all the modules, that tells you how many balls you need to keep the loop running at full rate. And, one of the drawbacks of ball pumps is that they absorb a lot of balls for their size. RTE is simpler. Modules are either designed to run until empty, or they aren't. For the Indiana Jones module, I think I'd really want a lifter inside that can run till empty. While ball pumps aren't RTE, they do have one very important attribute that is unique to ball pumps. Flexibility in the output height without having to modify the lifting mechanism. Because of the trap and chimney design, you can go to a show and by simply adding some extra bricks to the chimney, adjust the outfeed height as needed. This feature makes ball pumps uniquely suited for emergency use to replace failed modules. In my experience, the most common ball pump design out there seems to be this one, the 2018 Brickworld Chicago Workshop module, which unfortunately is slightly flawed. I knew I wanted to do this video a year ago, and I decided that before I did, I should build one of these and understand what I'm talking about. The very first one that I built, based on the original instructions, suffered from three issues. One, the agitator is prone to just popping off. When that happens, the ball stops feeding and the module is effectively dead. Two, the trap door can jam and the pump will stop feeding balls. Three, the ball pump will occasionally just blow itself apart. I've seen these things happen with other people's ball pumps at shows, so I know it's not just mine. But, as it turns out, it only takes a few simple tweaks to the original design to solve these problems. Now, to be fair, the original module wasn't necessarily designed for ultimate reliability. It was designed to be produced cheaply and efficiently for workshops. Consider this. Brickworld does workshops at three or four different shows, with 40 to 80 kits available for each show. So that means they need to buy and sort parts for something on the order of 200 kits. To keep the cost down, they can buy some parts in bulk, and this means it is more cost-effective if they can cut down on the number of different parts. For example, 
This design, out of necessity, requires many of these one-by-one -one technique bricks with a hole in it. Now in this spot, you don't need a brick with a hole, and you could use a standard one-by-one -one brick. But now you've introduced yet another part that has to be bulk ordered and counted out for each kit. Or you could just use the part that you already have and ignore the hole. So I'm not judging the original designer. Actually, the fact that this module is as popular as it is really speaks for itself. But that doesn't mean that the design can't be improved. So let's take a look at the original design and begin with the most important changes. For this video, I've colored everything light gray. Parts that are going to be removed or changed I've colored red, and new parts that I'm adding will be green. Let's begin with the agitator. One of the first changes I ever made to my ball pump was to pull out this barn connector and then yank out the 4L axle. Instead, I can run a 6L axle from the knob wheel underneath all the way up to the end basket, then put a rotor and a half bushing on it. As for the trap jamming, there's no change here, but there is something that you have to be careful about when you're building this. The trick at this stage is to push the bar into the brick until it stops, then connect the flag and make sure there's just a little bit of gap between the flag and the brick. Then, when you add the other bricks in the next step, just make sure that the flags can move freely and aren't pinching on either side. Finally, to solve the blowing apart issue. This seems to occur for one of two reasons. Either because the trap jams and releases suddenly, or because the balls in the chimney end up staggered and the column gets stuck against this inverted slope piece. I solved this by replacing this brick here with this snout brick that has studs on the side. The studs will force the topmost ball away from the back of the chimney, so when it hits the slope brick, it has to go towards the front. With these three changes, you'll get a much more reliable ball pump. There are some other changes that we can make that aren't as critical, but will improve the ball pump. Let's start with the chimney itself. First of all, there's two sets of these one-by-one -one technique bricks that are almost the perfect distance apart to be locked in with 5L lift arms. Inserting an extra row of plates gets the spacing just right, and now I can add these two lift arms to help strengthen the base of the chimney. Next is this ladder piece, which I think is ridiculous as an output ramp for a GVC module. I get it. It's a very simple, cheap way of implementing the output for a workshop module, where there will be 50 of these on a table, all in very close proximity, so the output ramp is probably not that critical. But if I'm building a ball pump for emergency use, I want a better connection and a better guide. I may be using this to cover a fairly long distance. All of my GBC modules use this standard connection of a plate with a bar that can feed this ramp with cheese slopes on it. As I've mentioned before, this is something that I can extend to longer lengths just by tacking on some extra plates and cheese slopes in order to reach the next module. At the top of the chimney, I just feel like it's incomplete without a cover, so rather than having these tiles, I prefer a 4x4 plate to close in the top. I'd like to point out that the top of the base and bottom of the outfeed are both these 4x4 plates with cutouts. These create a natural break point for inserting extension pieces between the two plates. There's lots of ways to build up a chimney with extra parts, but my personal favorite is to use 1x2x5 transparent bricks. I typically use six of them like this, which gives me a nice see-through chimney. In a pinch, I can get away with only four per level, which means with 12 of them I could go three levels or 15 bricks high. Now let's take a look at the rest of the end basket. First, the original design only calls for a single 1x2 slope on either side of the end feed. I prefer to do this as 2x2 two two slope pieces. I get that it works fine with a single 1x2 slope, which is cheaper, but I think it works better with the 2x2 two two slope. At the back end, there are three wedge plates on each side. Only the top one is actually necessary on each side, so I'm going to replace the lower ones with 1x3 and 1x2 plates. This in turn opens up space along the outside edges to replace the outer 1x6 tiles with 1x6 plates and then adding 1x2 cheese slopes on top. This helps guide balls into the agitator and keeps them from getting stuck along the outside edge. 
I also want to add some 1x2x2 transparent panels on the right side, and another one on the left side. This helps keep balls from bouncing out of the relatively shallow in-basket. This is especially effective if you can angle the ball pump to the left a little, relative to the feed direction from the previous module. Underneath, I added a 2x8 plate at the front end of the module to give it a little bit of forward tilt. This also helps the balls feed better. If you really want to get fancy with this ball pump, here are some additional improvements. First, if you're going to use 1x2x2 trans panels on top, you can also replace these 8 1x2 bricks with the same panels, which gives the public a better view of the inside of the ball pump. I also want to replace the 1x8 and 1x2 tiles on top with something that doesn't match the seams of the panels underneath. So a pair of 1x3s with a 1x4 in the middle. At the base, we can replace the combination of 2x14 and 2x2 plates with 2x16 plates instead. I assume that the choice to use the 2x14s was originally driven by cost and or availability. Next, we can add these 1x1 quarter round tiles at the front and back of the in basket to cover up these exposed tiles. Finally, I've never been a fan of the knob wheels. They work, and there's nothing wrong with keeping that aspect of the original design, but my preference would be to use 20 tooth bevel gears like this. One of the advantages of using the bevel gears is that I can replace this 20 tooth gear with a 12 tooth gear, giving me a 1.7 to 1 reduction in the rotation speed of the agitator. Here we can see my latest iteration of this design, where I've replaced the 5 to 1 gear reduction in the front with a 6 to 1 gear reduction and more solid support for the gear train. I did this to slow down the operation of the pump a little, in case I need to run it with faster Chinese motors which tend to run anywhere from 10 to 30% faster than the official LEGO motors. Even with a normal LEGO motor, this pump is plenty fast enough, even with the 6 to 1 reduction. So, compared to the original, there are more pieces needed, and there's more involved in putting this design together, but the result is a much more effective, flexible, and reliable ball pump. Before I go, I want to point out that there are other ball pump designs out there that are worth taking a look at. Let's start with the Reveal Ball Pump, originally designed by my friend Pinwheel. He designed this module to be as transparent as possible so people could see how the trap mechanism works. His approach for the trap is different from the Brickworld module, but obviously just as effective. Then, he uses this timing mechanism to feed the balls into the pump, rather than the two-piston approach of the Brickworld pump. This module was redesigned by Dunes to eliminate the gate mechanism and give it a better frame. This looks like a great show module and has a really nice big in-basket, but it's a little large to be used as an emergency spare. Next is this Double Pump 2.0 design by Mick the Bricker. I fell in love with this the first time I saw it and immediately had to build my own version of it. I just love the aesthetics of it. The clear panels that surround the base, the transparent chimney, the tiles that give it a classical European look, and especially the soft curves that guide the balls in the in basket. He does this by attaching curved slopes to snot bricks, which was a technique that I hadn't seen before. I ended up using the same technique in my Dark Tower Bridge module. I also really like the rotating feed mechanism, which is so much fun to watch. Unfortunately, this design is not jam-proof, as I discovered in Chicago when mine jammed. And while all the transparent panels around the base are great for aesthetics, they do present a bit of a challenge when you're trying to fix it. This design is also not bi-directional, which is fine, but something to be aware of. This ball pump, designed by Lassa DeLuren, has been around almost as long as the Brickworld design. It uses a similar carriage and cyclic piston design as Mick's ball pump, but it includes a clutch mechanism to help keep the module from jamming. It also adds a brake mechanism to the base of the chimney to keep the ball column from jumping up and down on each cycle when the end basket is empty. That makes this module much smoother in operation, so that's a really nice feature. 
This module is very compact and runs crazy fast. The cycle rate is over 120 cycles per minute, so the end basket empties quickly. I built my own version of this module, replacing the outfeed with my own standard chimney design. I wasn't crazy about the wheels and tires look for the brake mechanism, so I designed my own weights to look like concrete weight blocks. I also elected to extend the end basket to the back a little, adding another 20% to the capacity. The only drawback to this design, as an emergency replacement module, is that the clutch and the brake mechanism are limited in the number of balls that can be held in the chimney, which limits your ability to increase the chimney height. However, it will handle a height increase of 5 bricks, which will cover many emergency situations. As I mentioned in my last video, it's important to have some backup modules with you in order to replace a module that is broken down. In my opinion, the modified brick road ball pump is a neat, compact, and very flexible design that will serve you well for this purpose.